ever virtual play date. We are so excited to have you here. Normally, we like to make videos and take you places, kind of like little field trips, and show you all the cool stuff to do with your parents and with your friends. But right now, we've decided to sort of take you to those places and let you participate as if you were really there during our virtual play dates. We're gonna be doing this every morning live at 10 a.m., but you can play it over and over again or when you're ready at your convenience. So we're so excited to have you here today. I am going to take you to my friend Laura's art studio. It's called Brightly Art Studio. And it's located in Brownsburg, Indiana, which is very, very, very close to Indianapolis, Indiana. So I don't know where all of you guys are joining us from today, but maybe if your parents are around you, you guys can uh, let us know in the comments where you're watching from. We would love to hear that. <laughs> I do know it says it's testing our play date, but this is our real play date, so we'll get that fixed a little later. So Laura is going to lead a craft today, and it's going to be just like you're kind of with us. Um, I'm very excited to show you her art studio. It's beautiful. It's colorful. It's everything that we need right now. Um, and I'm excited to see what project she has for us today. Look at all lots of people. We've got people from Pittsburgh, from Plainfield, from Bedford, Indiana. So far, lots of people from Indiana. Lots of people from the west side of Indiana, which is also where Brightly Art Studio is located. So, Oh, Fishers, Westfield, lots and lots of people from this area. So we're so glad to have you. And I would love, love, love to know that your kids are, are watching this too. So I have a couple opportunities to tell you about. Each day at 10 a.m. we'll go live with our play date. And at the end of the play date, we'll tell you all about the next play date. So today I'm going to introduce our friend Laura. And at the end of the play date, my husband Jacob, who's usually behind the camera, helping us make videos to show you all the really cool places. He is going to come and say goodbye to you and tell you all about our play date for tomorrow. Um, we'd love for you to share this with your friends either right now or after the show so they can watch it later and participate in the craft as well. Um, but another way you can participate, if you're interested, if your parents say it's okay, let us know in the comments if you want to be involved. We are going to feature one family every day participating in the play date. So if you have the ability to put an app on your phone, parents, all you have to do is put this app on your phone, and then while your kids are doing that day's play date, we will remote to you and see your kids participating in the play date. So if you're interested, just let us know in the comments that you're interested in being featured in the play date, and we will contact you guys. All right, I am gonna go over to my friend Laura at Brightly Art Studio in Brownsburg, Indiana, and she is going to tell us what we're doing today, but first, we're gonna check out her art studio and see what normally happens there when they aren't closed. So let's bring our friend Laura in right now. Let's see, she's coming to one, and Laura! Hey! <laughs> How's it going? How are you? Good. Good morning, good morning. It's so beautiful and colorful in there. Yes, yes, that is always that is always happening here. I love bright colors, and so do so does everybody else. <laughs> right. Well, can you show us your studio and give us kind of an idea of what normally happens there? Yeah. So we are a process art studio, and oh, she's just gonna pan so you can kind of see <laughs> what's going on. But we are a process art studio, and what that means is that we really focus on the making, the doing, uh, the actual process of making the art rather than the final product. Final products are beautiful, but that's not where our focus lies. We are really into uh, helping kids unleash their, their creative ideas and kind of being their like artist wingman um, and helping them know how to edit and make decisions to, to make some awesome art. 
So we do, <laughs> let me answer the question. We do process art play groups for preschoolers and we do elementary uh, art clubs. So they come in on a weekly basis and make things. And then we do family art workshops where you create together with your kids. And then we do birthday parties. Birthday parties are a big deal and they're lots of fun here. I had to unmute because I also have kids here with me today. So didn't want anyone to run in here yelling. So, well, we are so happy to have you with us today, Laura. And I know all the kids watching at home are excited to dive into this play date and see what we're going to make today. So I'm going to turn it over to you and um, you just go on from there. And then at the end of the show, Mr. Indy with kids, <laughs> if he can get in the screen, my husband Jacob will say goodbye to you all and, and tell you what the next play date will be. So thanks so much, Laura, and you take it away. All right, here we go. So I, uh, I'm real excited. This is uh, the first time I've ever done this. Uh, I think it's the first time a lot of us have ever done anything. This I think this week is a, a week of first. So um, I have some, some kids here with me too. And I'd love to introduce them, and then we're going to get started on our art project. So I have my daughter, Lily. Say hi, Lily. She's 10. She's in fourth grade. And then I have Wes. Wes, how old are you? How old are you? How old are you, Wes? Um, Tell them how old you are. Five. Five. We have five-year-old Wes, and then we have Simon. Simon, how old are you, buddy? Two. Two. Awesome. So we are going to make a process art activity. It's one of our favorites here, and it is mask making. So here's an example of one that we made at a workshop a long time ago, but we are going to use, <laughs> we are going to use the supplies that we let you know in, in advance, and we're gonna make a really fun open-ended mask. Uh, this is great for all ages. Kids are gonna experience the art materials in a way that's developmentally appropriate for them. So you don't need to worry about if this is too old or too young. They will, trust me, they'll know what to do. They will know what to do. So teaching art is my jam. I'm very excited to do this, but first I'm going to talk to the parents because I need you to do something for me while I read your kids a story. So you have an Amazon box, okay, flattened. You have some tape or some glue, some lids. I happen to have like an oatmeal lid, a bottle cap, and then some plastic lids. Any amount is fine. And then something to add color with. And let's get started. What parents, what you are going to do while I'm reading your kids a story is you are going to cut a big rainbow line out of your box, okay? It does not need to be perfect. I would say a semicircle, but this is more of like an oval. So you're gonna take your box, cut it, and then just cut a big rainbow uh, on the box. It doesn't matter. It can be as big or as small as you want. Then what you can do, hand me that, Lily, is you can take your scissors and you're going to cut some eye holes, okay? So it's kind of like a mask helmet <laughs> so that they can see. You could do rainbows or you could do triangles. It don't matter. They just need to be able to see out of it. And so while you guys are doing that, I'm going to read a story to your kids to get them excited about what they could make. And then also, you're going to have some scraps when you cut. I just want you to snip those into pieces. It can be, you do not need to plan this out, friends. Some of them can be big. Some of them can be small. But just cut the rest of, just give each kid a pile of cardboard. In fact, I would prefer not to be in specific shapes because we want to let their imagination take control. And so if you cut something that is a specific shape, it might make them feel like they have to make a specific thing. And that's not what we're going for today. So make a pile of cardboard, cut your rainbow line. Now I'm going to read a story. <laughs> Clear off my space. All right, this story is one of my favorites. It's called Beautiful Oops, and it's by Barney Salzberg. Beautiful Oops. Oops! <laughs> A torn piece of paper. 
is just the beginning. <laughs> Every spill, I know I spill lots of things, has lots and lots of possibilities. Bent paper is something to celebrate. A little drip of paint lets your imagination run wild. A smudge and a smear can make magic happen. A stain has potential <laughs> if you play with its shape. Holes in your paper are worth exploring. Let me get back in there to see. There's something hiding back there in all those holes. You see it? Yeah. I don't. I'll show you in just a minute, okay? <laughs> when you think you have made a mistake, that happens a lot, right? I think you make a mistake. Oops. Hold on that paper. Think of it as an opportunity to make something beautiful. The end. That was a fun one. It was a fun one, wasn't it? Did you like that story? I did too. I love that story because it teaches, uh, it teaches the adults and it teaches the kids that oftentimes when we think we've made a mistake, we can just change our minds and, uh, and go a different direction and turn something that might be considered an error into um, a really awesome piece of artwork. So we're gonna do that today. And now, Kids, I'm talking to you. This, the adults, hopefully you guys have have your box cut. You've got your shapes, your little cardboard scraps. And now kids, let's make some art. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> that's right, that's right. All right. I wanna see what kind of beautiful oops you can make. We have this piece of cardboard in front of you. All right, here's our cardboard. It can be whatever you want it to be. It could be a mask. It's gonna be held up like this. It's gonna, it could be a mask that's a pirate. Or it could be a penguin. Or it could be like a pirate penguin. That would be pretty fun, right? Yeah. You can make whatever creature or uh, animal that you want. And we're gonna use yeah, some. Are you gonna make a bear? I can't wait to see your bear. We are going to use the supplies that we have today to make a really cool mask. And masks are a lot of fun. They're actually, they're sculpture. So we are going to add things to this cardboard and make it three dimensional. And what three dimensional means is that you can touch it and feel it. It's not just flat. So the first step in making our mask is gonna be adding onto it using the things that we have here today. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I am gonna show you how to add things onto your cardboard. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look in my supplies. Perhaps you have some supplies as well. I'm gonna use this piece of plastic. This is a plastic lid. And I'm gonna think what could this be? Could it be an eyeglass? Could it be an ear for a creature? Could it be scales of a dinosaur? It could be anything. We can pretend that it would be anything. What do you think you would make this lid be? What would you make it be? Pineapple. It could be part of a pineapple. What would it be for you, Wes? What do you think? Could it be? 
I know. Oh. You need to think <laughs> about it for a minute, huh? Well, we'll come back. Simon, do you know what you would make this become? It would become an ear? What about these cardboard scraps that I have? I have some funky looking shapes here. I've got this really big one. Hmm, what could this be? I've got an idea for this. What do you think? I want you to pick up one of your cardboard scraps and I want you to tell someone nearby what you think you want to make with it. I have an idea for my mask that these, they kind of remind me of antlers. I think I'm going to add antlers to my mask. So what I want you to do is I want you to look in your cardboard scraps and I want you to think, what could it become? It could become anything you want. You could use them as scales on a lizard or you could use it as a nose or what other kind of fun details could you add? Maybe you're making yours into a mask that looks like a pineapple. You can do whatever you'd like as far as adding things to your mask. So I want you to look at what you have and I want you to start adding things to your mask. And if you don't know what it's gonna be yet, that's okay, all right? That's part of the fun. And in fact, adults, they really like this stuff and they start to have ideas too. But I want you, I wanna tell you a secret and I want you to lean in, okay? Lean right in. They probably want to do this too. And they're going to start maybe having ideas for your mask, but you're the artist today. So it's going to be your ideas. And if they, maybe they could make their own and you could have a whole family of masks, but you're the artist. And part of what's great about being an artist, friends, is that you get to make the choices and you get to make the decisions. And so I want you to do that today. Okay. What could it become? And what could you make? And if you have ideas, I can't see the comments right now, but if you want to tell me what you're making, I would love to hear what you're making because I get really excited about art and I can't wait to see what you start to make. So you keep working and I'm going to start giving you, oh, we got some ideas here. I'm going to start giving you some more ideas because what if, what if not right now, don't leave me alone, please, please, please. But what if in a few minutes after I'm done talking, you go on a scavenger hunt around your house for other things that you could add to your mask. You probably have some things that would be amazing and you're gonna come up with better ideas that I even have. But what if you go and you start looking for things around your house to add to your sculpture? I picked out some things that I went on a scavenger hunt before I got here of things that I thought maybe would be cool to add to a mask. So here are some of my ideas, but if you have your own, they're going to be so much better than mine, so don't even worry about it. I found some Q-tips. What if Q-tips became fangs? Would that be good? Do you think that would be good? Would you want to put fangs on your mask or teeth? What do you think these Q-tips could be? Hmm. Eyebrows? No? They're my children. They think my ideas are terrible always. <laughs> yes, you could add Q-tips to your mask. It could be whatever you want. You could add cotton balls. Did you know you could stretch out cotton balls? This could be fur. Maybe you've got a furry creature that you want to add. Or it could be a mustache. You could add a mustache to your mask. Or I also found some yarn, things like that. And did you know you could even, here, yep, you can grab this up. You could even use food. You could even use some food. I know, right? Blew your mind. You can use food for part of your mask. What if you have to ask your parents first? But what if you use Cheerios or some cereal and you glued that or taped that Can on? please have that? Yes, yes. Oh, the Q-tips. Get you some Q-tips for yours. What are you going to use it for? Eyebrows. Eyebrows. <laughs> so what if you use some cereal and you glued cereal down? That could make it, give it some fun texture and make it bumpy. Okay. Or what if you grabbed, well, here's an idea. 
what if you found an old sock? I have lots of socks at my house that don't have matches anymore. They're gone. I don't know where they go. But I have socks that don't have matches. Could a sock become something? Like a floppy ear? Maybe. No, my knee is a foot. It could be a foot. It could be a foot <laughs> for your max. Yes, there are so many options. It's really endless. And I want you to start to think about what you could do. Or now, and hugs. yes, absolutely. You could find a whole bunch of things around your house after you go on your scavenger hunt. I hope you're still here. I hope you didn't leave me and I'm not talking about myself. That would be embarrassing. Uh, but I want you first to ask your parents. That's very important. You need to ask your parents before you uh, start gluing socks onto things. <laughs> and so I want you to ask your parents. That's very, very important. But once you have their permission, you can add, you, you probably are like, Miss Laura, stop talking. I have ideas and I'm ready to go. And I promise you, I am not gonna talk much longer. But you, I also want to talk just a minute about adding color to your mask. Before you add any color to your mask, I am gonna need you to do your sculpture part first. So get all of the cool details on your mask. How long could you do this? How detailed could you be? And then when you are ready to add color, I'm gonna use markers to show you first. You are going to start to color on your mask. You can use markers, crayons. I even have some other fun art supplies to show you. But what I want you to do is I want you to cover up all of that cardboard color. Let's try not to leave any cardboard color. Okay? And when you're coloring, you're going to notice that there are some spots. See right here close? These, these, Simon, those are called hungry spots in our artwork. Oh. They are. And it is telling you, when you can see the cardboard coming through, it says, I'm hungry. And it wants you to feed it. And do you know how you feed a hungry spot in art? Yeah. You just keep going. And you want to fill in all those hungry spots. Okay? Can you do that on your mask? Can you fill in hungry spots? Can you add a bunch of cool colors to your mask? Another fun art supply that you might not know about, but you might know about it, are these things called color sticks. I, um, they are my most favorite art supply when working with children. They are tempera paint in like a glue stick form. You twist them up, twist them down, and let me show you how they work, okay? You can um, get these on Amazon. Uh, there are several different brands. This is the Uli brand and they're called chunkies and the way that they work oh they're just so great they put paint on any surface that you could paint on they dry very very fast they have great coverage and great color and they also once they dry they, they dry so fast less than a minute and then um you can use them so many different projects if this this would be uh for sure a quarantine must have at uh at my house so you can get them on amazon there are several different brands the quick sticks brand is also very great but it is i think sold out because everything's sold out but these are not the only brands they are do we want to put some of these on your mask yeah. be so great be so great so what kind of ideas do you have are you coming up with your own for making your own mask? Maybe we could show what some of our kids are doing. Okay, if the kids are older, feel free to give them scissors and trust them. I find that kids will rise to the occasion when you allow them to use uh, supplies that typically are not reserved for children. So if you have, yes, let's see yours. Let's see Simon. Let's see Simon's. <laughs> Are you painting on the glue? That's another great tip for working with littles is put some glue and give them a paintbrush and let them paint the glue onto the surface. That will, um, it's just a little bit better for their fine motor skills. And then what are you doing, Wes? What kind of things are you making? I'm making a monster. These are his teeth and those are 
that some more teeth. And I changed the, I just got carried away on these uh, from being on the eyebrows to being to more teeth. More teeth. And you know what, Wes? I love that. I love that you changed your mind. Artists change their mind all the time. And so that you're doing something that artists do. I'm really proud of you. I can't wait to see what it looks like when it's done. And then Lily, what are you adding onto yours? Fruit. Fruit, she says. So she's added, you're adding a bunch of texture, little dots, some squares, and you're cutting your own pieces of cardboard. Cool. So as you can see, this is not going to be something that is done in 30 minutes or less. So your kids are going to be busy for a while. And I want you to encourage their creativity. Uh, process art tends to be a little bit more abstract for us adults. What do you need? You want some of these colors fixed? The scissors. Well, I am going to help you with the scissors once we're done with our video, okay? Okay. <laughs> so process art can tend to be a little bit more difficult for us adults. Why? Because we really like to control things, um, which is why things are really scary as an adult right now because things kind of rock in the air. But I want you to lean into this process with your kids today. See where their ideas take them. You'll be surprised. They're going to come up with ideas that you couldn't have even thought of. They will combine animals. They will, their kids are naturally wired this way. And let's lean into that and support them and have some fun doing it. I would love to see the masks. I think, wouldn't it be fun if we had like a mask party? Could we have a mask party? Yeah. We could have a mask party. Why don't you, when your kids are done with their masks, take a picture. Could you guys ask your mom and dads to take a picture of your mask? Yeah. Yes? Uh, yeah, I'll already take a picture of her because she's mine. <laughs> but you could take a picture of your kids with their mask and then... Uh, post it here in this in this feed or on the Brightly Art Studio Facebook page. I for, would love for you to go to the Brightly Art Studio Facebook page uh, and on Instagram and give us a follow because I'd love to connect with you. I have lots of fun things planned over the next couple weeks because unfortunately Brightly Art Studio is closed. That's that's just how it is right now. But I really want to support you and have fun with you kids while we are while we are doing this uncertain thing. I would love for you to share the masks that you make. Tell us what you thought and um, have fun with your kids today. They might even wanna make several masks and I'm like, go for it, knock yourself out kids. You could have a mask parade, a puppet show. Uh, what else could you do? Uh, let me tell you what my kids do with me. They take these masks and they pop out when I'm turning the corner and they scare me and they think it's hilarious. So you also have a jokes that you could play on somebody, but don't be too scary. Just a funny like, ah! you know, the one like that, right? That could be fun too. All right, lots of different things you could do. Uh, thanks for having me again. Brightly Art Studio on Instagram and Facebook. We're in Brownsburg. I We're going to have a real big party <laughs> once we're able to open the studio again and welcome our artists back. And I would love to have you. And we do birthday parties, classes, clubs, workshops, the whole thing. Basically, we are for creativity and we are for our community and we're here to support you. I've got a whole team of amazing ladies that teach with me. We're all licensed educators in the state of Indiana and, uh, and we, we love kids and we love creativity. So Katie, thank you so much for having me. And um, yeah, this has been a blast and I will be sure to post these kiddos masks in the link below once they're finished. Bye. Hey, thanks so much for, for having hanging out with us today. Um, I'm Jacob from Indie with Kids. And uh, so on behalf of Katie and everyone else, thank you very much. We would love to see those pictures as well. So please share those on our page, on Brightly's page. Um, you said on your Instagram or do you, on your Facebook? Where would you on like to see Facebook. those? Or, yeah, on our Facebook. And on if you your want Facebook. to tag us, um, yep. I would just love to see them. So. We will do that. We'll start a thread and we'll get you tagged and we'll have you get some pictures to you. So thanks, everybody. Especially thanks for everyone who... Uh, Put up with the technical difficulties there. I know that was fun for a minute, uh, but we really appreciate everyone being here. 
And uh, tomorrow we have at 10 o'clock, we're doing ninja moves with Ninja Zone. So make sure you check back. We'll see you then. Bye.